Hey guys, I'm Chris from Lucky Gunner. In the last few days, I've been out at the top secret Lucky Gunner Valley where we film a lot of our videos. I've been testing a pair of bolt action rifles, both chambered in 223 or 556 NATO. The first is the Ruger Gunsight Scout Rifle. The 308 version of this has been out for a while, but they just came out with the 223 version. And right off the bat, there were complaints because they stuck with the Accuracy International magazines instead of something more common like AR-15 magazines or even their own Ruger Mini-14 magazines. So that has naturally invited some comparison with the Mossberg MVP Patrol. It's about the same size as the Ruger, also chambered in 223, but it does take AR mags. On paper, these rifles have a lot in common. If you wanna see the side-by-side -side technical specs, we've got that in our blog article. Basically, they're about the same size and weight, both about seven pounds, both have 16-inch barrels with threaded muzzles, both have Picatinny rails and backup iron sights, but they start to diverge in some of the details. The Mossberg front sight is a fiber optic and the rear is an adjustable open sight on the barrel. The Ruger only has a plain black blade front sight, but the rear is the far superior adjustable ghost ring aperture sight. Mossberg's put a standard Picatinny rail over the receiver for mounting optics. The Ruger has a scout style rail forward of the receiver, so you can use intermediate eye relief scopes and red dot reflex sights. Recently, I wrote an article all about the scout rifle concept. Lightweight, handy bolt actions that can be used as general purpose rifles. Now, neither of these two guns really meet the criteria of being a true scout, mostly because they're not chambered in 308, but they still follow the spirit of the scout rifle, and the smaller 223 caliber has some advantages over 308. It's cheaper to shoot, and it's got a lot less recoil. The MVP Patrol and the Ruger Scout are what you might call mini scout rifles. They aren't purely hunting rifles, they're not target rifles, and they're not ideal for, for self-defense, but you can squeeze them into any of those roles if you really need to. So which one is the better mini scout? Running them through their paces at the range, I was looking at three basic criteria. One, I wanted to know how the actions compared. What happens when you run these bolts hard and fast? Second, the overall handling. How did they balance? Did they have good ergonomics? Are they quick to get on target? And third, accuracy. Did they hit where I pointed them? Testing accuracy is usually pretty straightforward. I shoot 100 yard groups from a bench rest with a few different loads. But it was hard to get a side-by-side -side comparison of these two rifles because of the optics situation. In addition to working with two different mounting systems, these rifles are best used with compact, low-power scopes that are really good for close to medium range. On the Ruger Scout mount, I had a loophole 2.5 power fixed intermediate eye relief scope. For the Mossberg, I was using a Bushnell AR 1-4x24 power scope. Both of these optics are great for quick target acquisition and they still give you a little magnification, but they're just not made for shooting tiny little groups on paper. Now having said that, I did get some decent groups out of these rifles. The 1 in 8 twist rate on the Ruger's barrel seemed to run great with heavier bullets. 77 grain CBC match ammo gave me this 6 round group inside of an inch. It also shot around 1 MOA with 77 grain Remington Premier match. The Mossberg has a 1 in 9 twist rate, so the heavier bullets didn't perform quite as well. Unfortunately, I didn't have any match grade ammo in lighter bullet weights, but I did get some good groups out of the MVP with standard 62 grain Fiocchi ammo, like this one that was just a little over an inch. Bottom line, I just wanted to make sure that these guns were decent shooters. Any bolt gun you buy today should be shooting at least close to one MOA with the right ammo. And like I said, these are not bench rest target guns, but if you want to do some informal target shooting, the accuracy is there. I just think it would be a shame to mount a bulky, high magnification optic on these things and relegate them to bench duty. That's not really what they're for. They're the kind of rifles you want to sling over your shoulder and take with you. And on that note, the handling. It's one of the strong suits of both of these rifles. At seven pounds, they are at least a pound heavier than a lot of other bolt guns out on the market. And that's before you add the magazine. But they've got the shortest barrels that you can legally have on a rifle. And with a lot of those other lightweight guns, you won't have iron sights and a scope rail and a muzzle device. So these mini scout type guns pack in a lot of features at the expense of just a little weight increase. Overall, I think the MVP Patrol handles much better than the Ruger. The Mossberg will take just about any AR-15 magazine, but it comes with a short 10 round magazine that adds minimal bulk and it's extremely light. The Ruger magazine also has a 10 round capacity, but it's a single stack, so it's much longer. It's also surprisingly heavy, and I think that throws off the balance of the rifle. It makes it feel much heavier than it is. The Scout scope also adds to this perception. The loophole was only seven and a half ounces, which is less than half the weight of the Bushnell that I had on the Mossberg. But having that weight on top of the barrel really makes a difference. The worst was shooting from a standing position, either offhand or with the sling. 
holding the rifle up got tiring a lot quicker than it should with a rifle that's supposed to be light and quick. Fortunately, you can get smaller five round magazines for the Ruger and it's possible to mount a scope over the receiver in the normal spot. I didn't have a chance to try these things out, but I think they would be a huge improvement. The quality of the action is often an underappreciated aspect of bolt action rifles. If you've got 10 rounds in your magazine, I think you should be able to crank them off as quickly as possible. That's what scout rifles are all about. But that's not always really easy with bolt actions. If you get too sloppy when you're working the bolt, you can easily experience problems like double feeds or binding the action. The best way to find out what could go wrong with these actions was to add a little time pressure. So I ran a few simple drills on the clock to see what would happen when I wasn't taking my time. Both actions gave me a little trouble, usually with short stroking. I had to jiggle the bolts a few times to keep things going. And at least once with each rifle, I managed to create a double feed bad enough that I had to actually remove the magazine to clear it. The number of hiccups I had with each rifle was pretty much equal, but I think the Ruger is the better action. For me, it had a lower learning curve and it was easier for me to get the hang of just how to manipulate the bolt. It was smoother and it required less effort. Well, the Mossberg, there's some sacrifices when they have built in the ability to be able to feed from AR magazines. And it just never quite feels natural when you're running the bolt. It's got kind of a gritty quality to it and there's a lot of side to side play. So both the Ruger and the Mossberg have their strengths and weaknesses, and they've got similar features too. So what about the price tag? The MSRP for the Mossberg is 709. You'll see it selling for closer to 550 or 600. The Ruger's MSRP is 1039 and it sells for closer to 800. Now that's a pretty big price gap. So, and that kind of complicates this comparison. But here's my take on it. If you have an AR-15 and you want a bolt action rifle to mess around with for target shooting, maybe a little hunting and you don't want to spend a fortune, then go with the Mossberg. If you want to shoot the rifle a lot and run it really hard, if it's going to get abused and haul through bad weather, then get the Ruger. If you have no idea what you would do with either one of these guns, just get an AR-15.